How's it going, fam? My name is Raul from QB and Kennels, and today we're going to be talking to you about genetic dog testing. You may be thinking that genetic dog testing is exclusive for dog breeders, but nothing could be further from the truth. Genetic dog testing gives you a whole new insight, whether you're a breeder or a dog owner. You're able to actually see if there is some sort of underlying condition that will pop its head up sooner than later. So wouldn't you want to know if your dog has some sort of, say, kidney issue? Is something that could be easily sidestepped by changing their diet. But if you never know, you may be continuing to feed them whatever you're feeding them now, and you might be shortening their life without even knowing. So the power of knowledge, the power of knowing what's there, it's gonna help you as a pet owner or as a breeder. If you're a breeder, when you want the world to know that your puppies are actually free of any type of genetic predisposition, the only way you're going to show that is through a genetic dog test. And that's what this video is about. So I got this box today. Uh, we're going to go inside and make sure that there's nine tests in there. Uh, I have two litters. I have a litter with three pups and another one with six. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to give litter names to these pups, whether it's a marking or something I see. I usually like to give them litter names that correspond uh, with the theme of the litter, whatever I named the litter at the time. This is needed because you must link a test directly to a pup. So being able to identify them easily and clearly is of the utmost importance. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and open one up. Uh, we're also going to go ahead and set it up uh, with our pup so that uh, you can see how we do it every single time. Now, if you look at the front of this, uh, you have a code up here, okay? It says Embark for Breeders. A lot of you are asking me which Embark um, product, if you wanna call it that, is the one that I use. Uh, I'm right here showing you on the screen that we use the one for breeders. Um, I don't go to their main page to purchase it because I already have an account with them. So I just click and it automatically takes me here. And this is what it shows me. This is the product that I choose. And then depending on how many pups uh, that you make the order for, depends how much of a discount. So keep that in mind. Um, I already know what most of you are thinking. I should have gone ahead and ordered an extra one because that way I would have had, what, a 20, what is it, 20 or $30 discount for each. Uh, fact of the matter, I wasn't thinking uh, at the time of the ordering. I just put nine and, and went with it. So uh, I will also let you know, if you look at the back of this, is two barcodes, all right? And this is really important because this number has to match up with your pup. This is why we're going to name each pup here today and break it down for you. When you open your Embark, do not throw this away. It's going to give you uh, simple instructions and it's also going to give you again the number. More instructions. Have you activated your kit? Go to Embark. Drop the sample back in the bag. Mail up to three kits. See this is just a little swab. Okay with a little liquid in here. The liquid is in here actually. And so that's what we're going to be swabbing the puppies with. All right this is a little bag that you're going to need to put everything else in. And then again it tells you how to do it going to swab the inside of the gum of the dog without spilling. We're going to go ahead and put the swab back in the little tube and then we're going to flip it front and back about 10 times. Also, check it out. It says simple breed specific health risk traits, COI and DLA diversity on one cheek swab. It is accurate. It says mutations are tested two to eight times per sample in our 200,000 TLIA quality control. Lastly, it says reliable priority support to breeders and clubs from our team of PhDs, veterinarians, and canine genetics. So for those of you that own dogs and you really want to know what's going on under the hood, you're already seeing what their credentials are saying. If you look at the front of the package, this is what you got. And obviously that's just uh, automatic uh, USPS uh, mailer mailing label. Uh, and no postage is necessary. You're going to drop this in the mail just like you see it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring a puppy in here. And then we're going to go right ahead and swab the cheek. And I'm going to do the process right here for you so you, get, you guys can see how we do it. We're going to do it for all nine of our pups. Also, we're going to name the puppies. And then we're going to put everything together and we're going to send it to the post office. 
All right, so let's make it happen. Uh, she comes from our King's Litter. She's off of Genesis and Kai Kai. She's about six weeks old. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and swab her cheek. So the first thing that you, got, that you must do, make sure she doesn't have any food going on on the cheeks, okay? No food, okay? Because if you swab this and you have food on there, then guess what? It's got genetic information from whatever animal was killed in order to, you know, to help make the kibble. So you gotta make sure that they don't have food on there. So what we're gonna do based on the instruction is we're about to swab for 30 to 60 seconds, right? So that's what we're about to do. So we're gonna grab our little puppy here and we already know this this is gonna be rough. It's gonna be rough because puppies, now if you, if you have to stop for whatever reason because the puppy is moving or whatever, that's fine. She moved it out of place, obviously. So we're gonna come in on the other side. And there we go. There you go. So what it's doing is while you're doing this, it's actually getting the dead cells off of the gums or the cells off of the gums. And that's where we're basing ourselves off of. Any cell in the body could be used for DNA. They use specifically this or some even do the whole blood thing, but blood is not even necessary for this, to be honest with you. So we went ahead and swabbed it for anywhere between 30 to 60 seconds. If you don't see anything on there, that's okay. Where you're gonna see it is, so let's go ahead and open it and put it in there just like it instructs. And once you close it, we're gonna do this to it about 10 times, see something else. It's gonna go ahead and stain my swab. Now remember, we gotta come up with a name for her, right? We gotta come up with a name for her because yeah, you see, you can see the staining on the swab. I don't know if you can see it on there, but it's on there. So now the next part is we need to name this beautiful girl. And that name, we're going to go ahead and put it on the envelope and everywhere else so that we know that when we get that result, uh, I was going to be using the name Majesty on one puppy in this litter. So why not this beautiful girl? So we'll name her Majesty. So we're gonna grab this, right? We're gonna grab it. We're gonna throw it in this little plastic bag. Oh no, sweetheart, hold on. It's got one of these little things you take off and then it's got, a, it's got like glue on there. So we're gonna go ahead and drop it in here. Now I'm not gonna seal this shut. I'm not gonna seal this shut just yet because I'm gonna drop other it says drop up to three tests in each one of these what we're going to do now is i'm going to write her name on here so i know that this number belongs to her majesty all right so it is on there okay as you see it yeah she's over here trying to chew on it and write it here on the envelope as well it can get very complicated if you don't do it in this manner so we do this and now this i'm going to keep i'm going to store it at the end, I'll show you guys where I keep it. But Miss Majesty is pretty much done. So we're gonna go ahead and put her back and bring another one of her sisters. So I went, I went ahead and got myself another envelope for her. So we're gonna go ahead and open it up. Get the contents out. And now we're gonna go ahead and swab this beautiful little girl. We've been thinking about a name for her. Uh, she does come from the King's Litter. She is a little nervous here today. She's shaking actually. Uh, so I'm thinking about naming her Princess, just giving her little name, litter name of Princess, just so we can identify her uh, for whenever we do um, the Embark. The beauty of it is uh, later on down, you can change the name. Uh, you know, once she goes to a home and they decide to change her name, they could change the name on the Embark. So right now, we've been doing this now for yeah, about 20 seconds. Uh, so we got about another 10 seconds to go. And we're just swabbing up and down. Luckily for me, she's not jumping around or doing anything, which is good. Uh, and it is what puppies should be doing is jumping around and trying to bite at this and whatnot. But it's always good when you could actually do it without all that. So we got it done, right? So now what we're going to do is open this up. 
put this in there and close it. Once it's closed, we're gonna flip it 10 times, right? 10 times. Does she look like a princess to you? Cause she definitely looks like a little princess to me. So we're gonna go ahead and write her name. So we're gonna go ahead and drop it in here. And that's the second one we've got done. All right, guys, so I made a mistake and I actually went through the entire process with the third puppy out of the King's litter. And this is Queen. OK, and we named her Queen because she is a true alpha, this little girl. All right, fam, so now we have a male from the California Dreaming Litter. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and swab him. He's only about a week old. And so it's gonna be, it's gonna be kind of interesting to see how it goes down. All right, so there we go. Yeah. Oh boy, he keeps yawning on me. Keeps trying to lick it, which is fine. But there we go, we got our 30 seconds. So now we're gonna go ahead and do this. As you already know, we're gonna go ahead and close it. We're gonna do this 10 times, right? So we're all set. Uh, we're gonna call this young boy, wow, California dreaming. Something about Cali and Lilac. Tell you what, we're gonna call him LA. That's what we're gonna call him. So we have LA on both forms, right? We got LA on both forms. So that's set. And now we just go ahead and grab this proof bag. I thought we only did this in hospitals is pretty interesting. I guess the mail also hold, upholds that regulation. So there you have it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and drop it up in here. And that's the first one. All right, fam, so we have another mail here and uh, we're gonna go ahead and name this little boy Qatar uh, because it starts with a Q and in reference to the World Cup, we just thought it'd be kind of cool. So we're gonna name him Qatar and we're gonna go ahead and swab him. Talk about, yeah, he's got, he's got his eye, he's got one eye open. Yeah, they could give you a hard time. Oh, boy. was that about five seconds? Got about 10 seconds down. 15. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh, these last five seconds are gonna be hard. And we're done. All right, so now we're just gonna go ahead and do our little thing here. Put that in there and you go 10 times. So we got little little King Qatar. Let's call him that, man. I like it. Got a nice little ring to it. King Qatar. And um, now all we got to do is just activate the kit. Put this in our spill proof bag and drop it in there. We are done activating our kits for the day. All right, guys, uh, I just did another one. Her name's Delilah. Uh, I figured I'd just go ahead and skip her just because uh, it's gonna make things a little bit quicker, but it's the same process over and over again. We have Delilah's sister, LA and Delilah's sister as well, except this one is a Merle female. I'm I'm thinking we're gonna go ahead and call her, uh, her name's gonna be Cookies and Cream. So we'll call her Cookie for short. But um, 
Let's go ahead and, and get her swabbed. She is fast asleep. I am hoping it's actually that easy for me. Uh oh, uh oh, here we go. They get that yawning action. You know, they're not always just gonna sit there and let you just do whatever. So, all right, so we are pretty much, all right, so we're done. So you already know what we do, man. We go ahead and do that. We do this 10 times. So there's, there's our names, Cookie over there and over here. So we're all set. And then this, we're gonna go ahead and put in the transparent little pouch, cover that. And then this one is gonna go together with the other two pups. So it's a total of three. Remember, you can only have up to three per mailing package. All right, so we have Khalifa here. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and swab her. And Khalifa is the second Merle female we have off of this litter. All right, so little Miss Khalifa, she's a little dramatic. As you can see, I'm just holding her. So this, actually to my surprise, she's staying still. So I guess you can never know, huh? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, uh-huh. We got about 10 seconds there, so let's see if she can just let me do more. Yep, she does. She's nice and cool afterwards once I get started. So we're at about 20 seconds at this point. All right, there we are. And again, you already know what I'm about to do. This goes in here and you do this to it 10 times, right? Khalifa, you're gonna write it everywhere. And so we have our names on there. We have Khalifa there and Khalifa here. So we're all set. Now we're gonna go ahead and bag this, close it, 